Hello my friends, this is Wolfgang with Tools for Ascension and the following video that you will be watching is about the combination of crystal energy, water and of course spiritual energy for healing purposes. Please enjoy the excerpts from a private Skype session that I had with a dear client of mine uh, that uses my services to further explore and expand his own healing skills and understanding of reality. Uh, only in retrospect, it was decided to make the information public for the benefit of the many like you, while preserving the privacy of my client, who will be going under the pseudonym of Ixia. The goal of the session was to go into a past life of my client where he had mastered the skills uh, of healing uh, many beings at the same time. Uh, what we were shown was the use of crystals in combination with water and a certain type of energy or chi projection and let me state right here, there are many ways to do huge scale healings and this is only one of them. So let's get right into it. So uh, what I was thinking about is like water programming. You know, um, uh, water is an excellent uh, carrier of information, you know, like holy water, you know, healing water, um, snake oil. <laughs> you know, but, uh, so uh, water can be programmed. You know, and it can hold thought forms. You know, and if you can figure that one out, you know how to do this best. Mm -hmm. Then we can also, um, you know, go to other uh, substances, right? I mean, you know, the water is basically just a carrier wave. You know, like a carrier thing, like a CD or an LP, you not know, different media. You know, or uh, you know, yeah, just digital data store. You know, there's all kinds of carriers. I would think, you know, we, we visit um, incarnations of yours. You know, first of all, where you perfectly programmed water, you know, see what you did, how you did it, how it had an effect, etc. And then also we uh, visit, um, you know, a, a lifetime of you where you perfectly, you know, program crystals, you know, and I mean, uh, in a scale that's, you know, applicable to you in a way. You know, so let's, you know, and the effects and all the ins and outs of that. I think that's like definitely worthwhile investigating. Um, so let's uh, call in on an aspect of you that was perfect at programming water for the highest good. You know, it, it's going to be a big inspiration for you and, you know, widen your circle of influence, you know, of the good you can do, you know, by blessing water. So I see myself uh, in front of a, a large uh, natural crystal that's been, uh, I'm in a room, so this, this crystal has been brought in here. And there, there's like, uh, like water from a, it's not a pipe, it's like from a log or something. It's, so we're, we're in an early time. Uh, the water is just flowing over this thing and there's there's lights i can see it it's you know the, the crystals are wet it looks like the there's some crystal quartz uh clear but there's also a lot of amethyst type uh you know the purple mm -hmm. purple color there so um water is pouring over it um i see so um, I mean, some, somebody that's, uh, it's, I feel like I'm a woman, um, the, uh, so I'm, I'm using the powers So what am I doing? Um, I see people out in the fields, um, uh, Working in the fields, um, 
It's almost like you're giving them energy to be able to do that. Uh, Does it give fertility to the fields too, or is it just the people, or is it just? It seems crop? well. It's it's kind of all both. It's it's the people working out there, and I see you know this is kind of like more primitive times. I see sheep and stuff, uh, cows, and so it's it's kind of a, a bounty sort of thing. It's it's an enrichment. It's uh, you know, it's it's being used to um, increase the energy levels in the crops and things so that they grow well. Fertility. It it's it's fertility, but it's also robustness of growth. Um, when I think of fertility, I think about reproduction a lot of times, but it's it's also strength. <laughs> you know. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Strong, you know, yeah. Growth, good, strong growth, and thing. People with plenty of energy, they're happy, they're healthy. Mm -hmm. um, Us, is this Hindu culture? Yes, I know. No, I get more of a European sense of the people. Interesting. Yeah. I, I'm not sure exactly where. Um, well, that's all right. Mm -hmm. There's uh So what does that woman, you know, what does she project? Is it just she? Is it she from the earth, from the heavens, from source? You know, what does she actually project into this crystal? She has uh, the connection with it uh, from her you know, pineal gland and her, her energy, her chakras. Uh, she's a witch. She's... Uh, I see roots and herbs, uh, bugs, uh, spiders. Uh, birds, lizards, things. So she's, mm -hmm. she has kind of an understanding she comes from a family she's in a family line of these people so she's had a lot of knowledge passed down to her um, but what people does she come project? to her for what? advice so. mm -hmm. but she has an innate ability to project her chakras and make that connection into this the stream, the water trickling over the crystals and whatnot. Uh, Which is the main chakra she's using? Her third eye, her heart. I see a very large, almost like a cyclops uh, of the third eye, just, just, just <laughs> like glowing train, out. Right? You know? <laughs> like really, train, I mean, yeah. it's, it's like this that big, is. bright thing just glowing out of there. And she, she basically has her own eyes just shut and she's projecting the third eye, which is extremely powerful. I'm, I'm seeing, you know, just pure white out, you know, several feet on either side as she focuses into the, the crystals and the water. And it really enhances uh, the projection and the power. Um, Where did she get the energy? From the heavens or from the earth or from inside her? Well, it's kind of all it's it's she has a natural she's been born uh with an innate ability of this and it's something that passes down through the line um do you have that same ability do i have it yeah yes. just ask. Uh, yeah I have so, it. so let's do it right now uh-huh so just uh, go to, there's probably a crystal deposit here somewhere. Yeah, Mount Mitchell. There's, go to Mount Mitchell and ask that it's a crystal deposit there. Uh -huh. Very powerful. I think there's also water there. Ask that you be energetically connected, but of course only for the highest good and divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. You don't want to do any damage. Mm -hmm. So we asked for that assurance. Mm -hmm. Smile, smile, smile. Come on, be polite. I so I, sense, I don't necessarily sense it right at Mount Mitchell. I do 
at a spring near there, I, I sort of sense something. I can't tell you exactly where it is, but it's nearby there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's more of the clear uh, clear crystal quartz. Okay. Uh, there's a sense that there's some garnet, little garnets, some rubies, and things like that. In yeah, the water. they're local here. Okay. Little, now, uh, now ask ask for that priestess not to step into your body if that is appropriate uh-huh. and to show you you know to actually you know do her prayer whatever she does and to show you you know and charge up you know interact with that crystal with that water and bless the area for whatever is most appropriate you know? be just a humble learning from her like an apprentice in this and promise not to misuse it in any way. Just use it for the blessing. Mm-hmm. A good smile, 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 smile. Come on. So most of the blessing is just in the the wildlife in that area. There's uh, strength into like the deer, the turkey. Ouch! The snake that just bit me. Uh, the uh, birds. Salamanders, fish. Uh, and they're happy. Everybody else is going to be happy too. Yeah? They need a shot in the arm, I guess. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's it's increasing the strength of those. Um, oh, I feel the also to the nature. I feel my heart chakra just getting really solid and really strong. There, you feel that energy in your heart increasing. Oh yeah, it's. Uh, it's a very natural thing. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see what happens if we try to. So, let's see, there's people there. Let's send. They grow uh, people, some locals there grow small gardens. Uh, some of them have chickens, I see, and. Uh, see mule, uh, horse, cow, or chickens. I Pheasant. think it's it's spreading, it's spreading gradually. Is that correct? Yeah, it's spreading out. Uh, mm-hmm. So we're expanding out um, as let's we go. Yeah, let's see what happens when it hits the human realm. You know, the real, let's see how that affects those realms. It gives energy to the people, uh, you know, they carry on their lives. Uh, it uh, gives them sort of a satisfaction, if you will, of the daily, pursuing the daily bread, if you will, and being satisfied with their lives. Uh it's a healing sort of thing, gives them the energy, uh, takes away a lot of the tiredness from the routines and hard work. Uh, gives people a, a sense of satisfaction. They feel more like um, engaging in social activities with the neighbors and stuff, going to you know, church and uh, having dinners and things like that. The... Uh, uh, it has a lot of health to the farm animals. Um, uh, let's go where there is, you know, there is maybe there are some places where this is really needed. Maybe like a prison or hospital or like a toxic garbage dump. You know, let's uh, see if there's something like that. So we'll go into a, a prison or a jail. Doesn't seem to be big, but um, so it's it's helping people um, deal with captivity, um, the uh, sense of uh, confinement, um, things like that. It helps helps people kind of you know accept it so that they can ignore it. Uh, That's good. If you will, that you know, it, it takes away the the punishment aspects and just sort of makes it like you know, here I am, and you know, so they so they're 
psychologically they're more accepting of it and they start uh, yeah. using their time to uh, you know maybe study things or think about things it, it they take the confinement and lack of uh, freedom to do certain activities they take it and just make the best of it so that I think that helps within a confinement uh, environment now we go like to the hospitals um, so there you have a, a variety of elements and people there for different reasons uh, just have the water effect up there is particularly you know to carry on the information and to pass it on I think it you know it, it acts as an amplifier it's also mm -hmm. it's 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 a connection once again it's the water it's the the power of the crystals but it's connecting with the water and that that's kind of like a a medium that that connects everything once again so um, in the hospitals I think you're taking away a lot of the uh, uh, tiredness, uh, it's, it's increasing a person's, uh, I see, you know, increases in person's strength uh, of their immune systems, their recovery systems, uh, their ability to, you know, fight off uh, and heal uh, naturally, you know, using their natural healing systems, uh, ability to uh, recover from things, you know, and fight it off uh, naturally. Um, I see with some of the mental patients, just that calmness that comes in and uh, kind of a rebalance of a lot of the body chemicals that get thrown out of whack in people. Um, a rebalance of, of health. Um, I say a lot better intentions come from uh, people that deal with social issues like judges, lawyers, police, people like that. They uh, take a more healthy approach to the social uh, the social strata, if you will. A little bit more patience and uh, kindness, if you will. So it's it's something that um, this is probably one of the most potent healings you have done so far. It seems. So well, there's different there's different things. Uh, I now see fire, I'm trying to figure out well fire is setting into all this. Fire can be transformation, purification through fire. You know, ask that the fire be used to, um, you know, burn away the dark, the outdated. You know, there's a divine purpose to fire, that of purification. I, I see the water, I see it going through the crystals, but then I see fire around it, like the, it's not, He's being used to heat the water or the crystals, but it, it's kind of like the light or the radiance from it tends to uh, do something like to say a transmutation. Uh, it's the yeah, fastest way is fastest way of transmuting things. Fire. Uh, it has a certain strength to it too. Um, Oh, she asked how she's using fire. You know, if you use crystal water, now she, she asked her to show you how she's using fire for the highest good. That is a wonderful lesson. I love that. I really like her. Um.
trying to understand what it's doing. It's uh, maybe just describe. I see it. I see the fire, and then I see that. But what's the effect? What's it doing? It's almost like it's uh, something that you can use to increase a lot of its communication out with the fire and whatnot. It's it's not you're not boiling the water. It's more in the background and it's lighting it all up. It's uh, it's almost like when you stare into a fireplace, it increases your ability to meditate and focus somehow. Uh, you know, I can just sit there and stare at a fireplace all night, sort of, and just sort of get lost in it. So it's it enhances the ability uh, to focus into it and, and concentrate into it. You know, good. Also, uh, ask whether the fire is the thought amplifier. Yes, or no. it's the thought concentrator. Con concent. Okay, there. That to help you concentrate you know, into it. Uh, water, you know, with just, with just dim light, water passing over the crystals is a, uh, you know, it's a very quiet sort of relaxing uh, meditation, if you will. You know, people do little waterfalls in their house and things like that to relax and sort of, get that tranquility the the fire sort of helps your visual focus into it and i think it helps with the with the third eye you you're getting relaxed but you're also focusing you know with your eyes from that mm -hmm. And it seems that the fire, I guess, just from the reds and yellows and those sort of hues are kind of interacting with your uh, your red and your yellow chakras, the root and the, you know, the red, orange, yellows within yourself. It's kind of a connection, if you will. The green, each of the colors, you know, in the setup, you've got the, of course, the crystals, you've got the water flowing through it, you've got the fire, you've got the red, orange, yellows, you've got the greens from, you know, different little vines and things that kind of grow around these things. And uh, you've got the blues and, and whatnot of uh, different, uh, different colored crystals and rocks. So it, these colors kind of connect chakras. It's not just your mind and, and the pineal, it's also your chakras too. So you're, you're very much uh, communicating at all levels with this, with this, uh, with the water and the crystals and stuff. Does she add any more other elements to this? Like metals, for instance. Yeah, I see some gold and silver. Not a lot, I mean, because of the expense, I guess. But I see the gold and silver. I see different rocks, you know, uh, different minerals around. Uh, you know, you can see some of the reds and different pinks and different, you know, different rocks that you have, yellows. So what is the function of the metals in this kind of setup? I think the, the gold and the silver kind of has a, uh, some properties to it. Um, gold and silver trend, tend to be, uh, just like in these wands, they use silver to connect a lot of the, the pieces and it it helps uh, connect 
seemingly gold and silver help connect uh, quartz. Uh, seems to help connect quartz together. I guess that's why they use it when they make these wands and stuff. Um, it seems to help the flow of energy uh, too. It's, it's kind of a energy flow mm -hmm. mineral. Mm -hmm. It's the most conductive, I think, of all. Mm -hmm. But it also adds a certain quality. Tune in what kind of quality is being added by gold. Gold, um, Gold seems to be within ourselves. Um, an, an energy conductor within us between our chakras. We, we have our individual chakras that, you know, exist uh, because of their, because of where they are in the body and the, the nerve bundles and the, process functions, things like that, but there's there's something to our spiritual refinement that gold and silver, brass and bronze and, you know, different things like that. There's something about gold and things like that it, within our spiritual self, you know, that, it, that as we become more spiritually pure, we, we become more like a gold, you know, almost like a gold rod or something or silver or bronze. Indeed, it's, it has to do with, um, our purification of ourselves, uh, how over time we may uh, perfect our our spiritual self, if you will, our, our soul, our, our energy. Uh, we take on hues that I think they kind of reflect uh, like a, a, a person with pretty much a gold sort of um, rod, if you will, that, that seems to run up in them is somebody that's uh, spiritually perfecting themselves versus somebody that's got a dull, brown, rusty-looking fence post or something, you know. Ask, ask, uh, how the, ask how the principle of resonance, you know, applies to the metals in our force field. I think it has to do with resonance, you know. Yeah, it, when you use resonance, if you take it and just sort of reach out and touch gold and and silver and things like that, there's um, there's something about the resonance frequency is is responds better with gold versus some mm -hmm. of the other metals. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost like sound itself, you know. If you if you tap like a tap like a steel post or something it'll make a kind of a dull thud uh if you tap crystal you get that nice ting you know? right. so there's there's a resonance quality to uh, our our energies and things that interact with gold and silver and things like that okay now focus mm -hmm. in that uh, crystal thing right there is there are those gold substances there. Now focus on one of those areas, and send you know from the you know pineal gland a lot of energy into the gold substance and see you know how this whole thing gets more modified you know when the gold is amplified. And see how this affects you. Oh my God, this feels awesome in the heart. <laughs> Yeah, I feel when I focus on the gold, lump of gold there, I just focus my pineal body into it. And for some reason, it seems to make my the, the power uh, become very great there. 
and it just sort of passes down through you, uh, sort of a power surge, if you will. Cool. Now um, let's use, use your heart chakra now in comparison and project from the heart chakra into the world. Uh, once again, it seems to amplify quite a bit. It has, seems to have like an amplifier. Seems Ampl to mm -hmm. work. Uh, seems to uh, uh, work with us, if you will. It seems to amplify it. As you amplify into it, it seems to just grow it. Um, okay. mm -hmm. Grow it out. Just for shits and giggles, use the throat chakra too. Oh, yeah, it's very feelable. All right, very good. You know, rest yeah. is homework. We're not going to use the root chakra here. All right, let's uh, pick yourself a nice piece of silver in there. Uh -huh. And then do the third eye and see what how this is different than the gold. It's not as strong. It, it seems it'll be a little different. I guess that's something different about the resonance frequency or something. It's still strong, but but not as not quite as strong as seemingly. Does uh, it also have a different type of quality or flavor? It de definitely has a different type of quality, a different frequency to it. I think. Um, yeah, I can feel a different frequency to it. Mm -hmm. Now let's take uh, something like um, bronze, for instance. Oh, well, yeah. Well, maybe copper. It's uh, maybe copper is better. Copper is some pure metal, not an alloy. Copper is good. Oh, the copper is nice and warm, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. Yeah. <laughs> Very. It's not as grandeur as gold or silver. It's uh, but it's still. Organic. Um, it, you can still feel it when you um, project into it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Let's uh, go to platinum now. And see how that feels. Ooh. do. Come on, smile, you're scaring this. <laughs> scaring the platinum. <laughs> yeah, it's Jim's just going to get robbed. <laughs> you're part of a heist. Uh, yeah, very high frequency. Uh -huh. So let's compare this with iron, for instance. Let's go pick some iron and run into that. Wow. <laughs> It grounds you like crazy. <laughs> it's, it's definitely different. Yeah, each metal is different. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So what you saw, you know, this water flowing over this crystal, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when you look up Shiva Lingam, you know, this is in India, they have this round stone which represents the penis, and then they have this kind of rim around it, which is the vagina, lingam. So it's a fertility symbol, and they drop water onto it. Hmm. They have water flowing into it, and they project energy worship into it, all right? Oh, yeah. And that's and that's it, kind it of is what increased, like. It increases fertility, and it was actually in a tradition I've never seen one, but the most powerful Shiva lingams are actually crystals. Hmm. So that's why I asked, you know, which culture you were, and they did this in Europe too. I mean, they're not stupid, right? I mean, they did, uh, you know, so I, the combination of water and, uh, you know, these substances, you know, definitely has something going for it. I think that, uh, of course, man, uh, you know, is, is sort of spread out across the whole world, but it just seems like we pick up... Um, Roughly within the same time frames, uh, certain vibrations of influences. I mean, if you look at all the stone things that were built, they seem to kind of come around at the same time. The Mayan temples, roughly the Egyptian pyramids over in Malaysia, Cambodia, and places they built all that. 
So it seems it seems like that stuff all comes along at once. Now that it's much faster now because we're able to communicate amongst ourselves a lot more. But uh, mm-hmm. we definitely grow by uh, uh, vibrational influence, and it hits us all. You know. Right. Also, what I like to point out is, you know, with what you did there, you know, this was like what's this? Ten minutes. 15 minutes, you know, projecting onto this, uh, you know, crystal with the water here at Mount Mitchell. You know, the effect that you saw it having on the environment was tremendous. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's uh, just uh, the most efficient, effective I've seen so far. I mean, besides liberating, uh, like, armies of people and stuff like that, you know. It's it's kind of, it's it's almost like you're unblocking something that's there and allowing it you know another way to look at it is not that you're actively projecting it but sometimes you're unblocking it so that this energy can spread to all these things naturally anyway so so whatever was blocking it you're unblocking it and making it flow you know i can feel it in my hands i just said yeah right flow (laughs) i I can feel it feel it in my palms you know you see the little eyeballs in my palms yeah it's it it makes it flow it then blocks things and cleanses it makes it all flow you know so i can feel that very my hands are tingling just from being able to just do that don't touch yourself (laughs) yeah really (laughs) i'll point away